For this video, we're going to learn a little bit about masking. And I'm going to start with a blank document here and create some simple shapes to demonstrate. And then we'll move over to Kusi and add in some masking for her just to demonstrate something a little bit more complex. So first, we'll come back here to the blank document and we are on a new vector layer. And we're just going to grab the draw shape tool. Now with the draw shape tool selected, we can use auto fill and auto stroke, and we will use the oval shape. Coming over here to fill, I'll select a light blue color, something like that, maybe a little bit darker like that, and click OK. And then the stroke line doesn't matter as much, but let's just do a dark blue color for this. So something like that should be fine, and then click OK. I'm just going to come in and draw out that shape, just like this. Now, with this shape, I'm going to apply some shading and highlighting, and this can best be achieved through masking. Now, we could go through if we wanted to on this particular layer and try to add in different points. Perhaps we want the shading to occur near the top left. We could come in and start to add points like this, and you could try to manually put in these different shading effects if you want to. However, I think you'll find that the masking process makes this a lot easier. So that way you're not going in and accidentally destroying the original shape. And then when it comes to animation, not having to deal with a bunch of different points on one shape in order to create animation. So in order to mask, you need to have your layers inside of a group. And we can come over here and right click on the vector layer and choose to group with selection. So now we are inside of a new group with the vector underneath it. Now I can rename the first vector layer to oval. And let's just make two additional vector layers. I'll make a new one. We can name this one shading. And then the second one can be named highlights. So for shading, if I come over here, clicking once on that layer, I'm just going to grab the add point tool. You can grab any tool you wish to draw out. And I want to grab the fill color here and I'm going to turn it all the way to black and click OK. Same with the stroke, just make it black. And we'll come in and we can add some points going down like this. And we're just going to complete the shape by going up like so. Make sure that we have auto weld turned on for this so that way we can complete the shape. There we are. And then we can come in with the create shape tool, select the new shape that we just made and then create the shape which will apply the fill and stroke properties from the style panel. Now I'm going to come over here to the highlights and we're going to do something really similar. We'll grab the add point tool, come up here to fill. We'll change this to white. Same for the stroke color. And near the top here, I'm just going to add in some points like this, complete the shape, grab the create shape tool and create that shape. Now this doesn't look great right now. However, if we were to come over here and double click on layer two, which is the group and go over to masking, you now see we have new options for masking. For this particular example, I'm going to choose hide all and hit apply. By doing this, you can see now the shading and highlighting layers have been masked in accordance with the boundary of the oval. Now you may notice we have some other things going on as well, such as if we zoom in here, you'll see that the fill color is overtaking the stroke line a little bit, and that's happening in a couple different spots here. If you go over here to your layers and click on oval, Right down here, we have the ability to exclude strokes. So if we click on that, you can see by doing that, the stroke lines are now being applied over the original shading. So that way it's looking a little bit better now. And if we render this out, you can see it's looking like this. You can see currently when you're previewing this, it looks like the fill isn't going all the way to the edge, but previewing it will allow us to see a 
different view of this and how it's going to look when we render it out. Now, some other things we could do just to help with the effect. Coming over here, we can double click on highlights, perhaps go to the opacity setting and just reduce that. And you can see as I'm reducing it, we are getting a visual update on the canvas of what this will look like. So maybe something about like 30%, we can apply that. Go over here to the shading and we're just going to reduce that opacity again. And you could use blend modes for this as well if you wanna do that instead of the opacity. But we're just gonna go in, and let's do like 20% and then we can click okay. And then I'm gonna go back to that highlight layer and just grab this point and bring it down a little bit so that way we can create a more rounded edge for this. So there you go. So now you have something like this. And if we were to render it out, it appears that we have some shading and highlighting on this oval, but we don't have those extra pixels going outside of the bounds. And that's what masking can do for us. And shading and highlighting is just one example, but I think it's a pretty good universal example as it's pretty easy to apply and show off. Now with our character, which is going to be a more complex example, we have two things we'll do here. We'll add some shading and highlighting to the head, and then we'll do so for the front arm, just to demonstrate a little bit how we can go about this. So here, with the character, we do have a head group, as you'll see. And underneath the head group, we have the different head elements, so eyes, ears, and all of that. What we're going to do for head is first click on hair top, and then we're going to go to new layer and choose vector. And this is going to be the shading. And we'll do a second vector and we can name that highlights. I'm just going to abbreviate it by just using HLS. Now we'll go to shading first. And just like before, we can come in and add in a shape for the shading. And I'm going to do this relatively quick, but you can see we have a little bit of shading here on the bottom that we're going to create. Now, I can select that group, come over here, and I'm going to do a dark blue this time, something like that. And we'll make sure we create that shape. And using the select shape tool, I'm actually going to select the shape again, and then just disable the stroke. Now I'll go to highlights and we're just going to come in. I'll use the draw shape tool. I'll select my color for the fill to be white. And I'm going to disable auto stroke just so that way we just have the fill color. And I'll come in and add a highlight right about there. Now we're going to go to head, just double click on head to go inside, go to your masking, go to hide all, and then choose to apply. Now we have a similar look like we did before with everything being cut off. Now, if we want, we could go to the head and exclude the strokes. So we'll go to that head ears layer because we want the strokes to be exposed. So we'll exclude the strokes from the masking and hit apply. And then we're going to go over here first to shading, right click, go to blend mode. And as we go through, you can see we have the ability to choose the different blend modes. In this case, we'll choose multiply. And then for your highlights, right click, blend mode, and here we'll do an overlay. Then going back to these layers one more time, we'll start with shading. I'll just double click and go into opacity and we can drop the opacity down to let's say 30%. It's a pretty obvious shading effect, but that works. Click okay, double click on highlights and we can do the same. We can just kind of bring this down so that it's not as bright to about 30% and then click okay. Now, if we use control R or command R to render the frame, you can see that the shading is now in place for this character. And if you wanted to keep going, you could. So with that front arm and hand, you can see right here that we have the arm and hand separate. What we could do is add shading and highlights to each individual layer, or we could select both of these layers and then choose to group them. We can name this one then front arm and then make some new layers. So this could be 
your shading, and then we have the highlights right here. Coming into shading, since we're now going to be covering both of these layers, we're going to grab the add point tool and draw over the different layers. So both the arm and the hand, I could just start up here and quickly come in and draw out that shaded effect, just like this. Make sure that we fill it in. And I'll just do a dark blue again with the blend modes this time. We're going to create that shape. Make sure that we disable the stroke colors. And then for the highlights, we'll add just a small highlight on the other side. Again, I'm doing this pretty quick, so you could probably go in and refine this much more, but this should hopefully give us a good example. So we'll come up like this and release. We're going to create that shape, making sure that we select the fill color to be white and we can disable the stroke as well. Now we'll double click on front arm, go to masking. We're going to choose to hide all and hit apply. Now it's going to work a little bit differently now because we have more layers within this group. You'll notice that the hand is not being accounted for and that's because it's hiding everything except the bottom layer. That's how Moho usually works with your masking. So what we need to do in this case is click on hand one. And if we click on arm one as well, you'll see that arm one is set to add to mask and then hand one is set to mask this layer. We want hand one to also be add to mask and then apply. And now you'll see that it's going to retain the masking for the hand as well. And if we need to, we could also exclude the strokes for each of these in case if I didn't do that already. There we go. And it's just a matter of now of going in and adjusting your shading and highlighting layers. So we can use blend modes. We can use the opacity, whatever we want to do. I'm just going to lower this right now to, let's say, 20%. And for blending, I can choose screen as well. Maybe bring this up a little bit more to about 25. Hit apply, go to shading, blend mode. We can make that overlay or multiply. Actually, let's do multiply instead. And then we can reduce this down to about 25 and then click OK. So now if we render this out, just so you can get a better view of what we were doing here, you can see now we have applied highlights and shading to the head as well as the arm. So hopefully this gives you some idea of how you can do masking inside of Moho.